Hey, you remember the PlayStation 2 startup sound, right? Maybe you grew up with a PlayStation 2 like me, or maybe you know the startup sound from all the memes, but you probably don't know who made it, and you definitely don't know the whole story. I want to take you on a journey back 20 years in time to discover the mysterious origins of the PlayStation 1 and 2 startup sounds. I'm a musician by trade and I'm always looking for inspiration. So one night while listening to some ambient jungle, I sort of fell into a 2000s rabbit hole that ended up with me becoming obsessed with the PlayStation 2 startup sound. I wanted to know who made the startup sound, how they did it, and whether I could learn something from it and make music that sounded just as cool. A quick online search seemed to answer one of my questions. In 2019, as part of a Game Informer interview covering the 25th anniversary of the PlayStation, Jeff Cork interviewed a man by the name of Takafumi Fujisawa. In the interview, he talks about how he single-handedly created the PlayStation 1 startup sound and how he led the team who composed for the PS2. In the article, Fujisawa goes into great detail about the music theory behind his sound design. He talked about the pure intonation harmony and the dominant motion and fourth chords that he used to create the sound, and all of this would be really useful if I wanted to recreate some of that magic, but it was missing something. I wanted detailed answers as to what synths he used, and also I wanted to understand the story behind Takafumi Fujisawa. Who was this guy, and how did he come to make this sound that we all know and love? Online, I saw some people debating whether he used a Roland JD-800 or a D-50, but I couldn't find anything conclusive, so I decided I needed to do some more digging. I found a photo of him on Google Images, which I reversed image search. It gave me access to a Russian fan site for Forbidden Siren, where he had interviewed them about his work on the games. But it didn't contain any details about him or the PlayStation startup sounds, so it was a dead end. I spent many more hours trawling through random websites and getting lost in the internet wasteland when I ended up on MobyGames.com randomly looking through his credits for sounds that he'd worked on. Looking on the page, I found something really interesting. It was a section that said also known as, and it had his Japanese name. When I tried to convert his name to Japanese through Google Translate earlier, it hadn't given me anything. But this, this was something. With his name, I cracked into the Japanese side of the internet and started researching hard. I found out that Fujisawa had done some recent work in esports, and I also found this really interesting interview from 2010. A former colleague interviewed Fujisawa, but the premise for it isn't clear. It contains this cartoon, which we had translated into English. Oddly enough, the interview referenced Fujisawa's collaboration with global dance music icon Tetsuya Kimura. Additionally, I found this Polish language interview that he gave back in 2017. It contained more biographical information and details on his methods, but I still wanted more. His connection to Tetsuya Komoro was really perplexing. I had no idea when and why these guys worked together and whether there was something I was missing here. And I still wanted more detail about his process of creation, but these were answers I just wasn't going to get anywhere. They weren't published online, and the interviews he had done over the years were limited. So I had an idea. Through my research, I'd found some contact information that I thought might be worth reaching out to to see if I could get an answer from the man himself. It was a bit of a Hail Mary, but I thought it would be worth it if I could get some answers and be able to share them on camera with all of you. So I waited. The Hail Mary worked. I got my questions answered, and now we can use our exclusive interview to piece together the whole story and unravel the mystery for all of you. So let's dive into it, starting with Fujisawa's origins. In his early 20s, Takafumi Fujisawa worked as a freelance musician and synth programmer for companies like Korg, Kawai, Roland, and Yamaha. He was deeply involved in Yamaha's Clarinova series as well as working on the SY and PSR series and the sounds for the DX7 II. Fujisawa continued as a synth programmer until 1993 when he joined Epic Sony Records. At the time, they were working on music for Nintendo Famicom games, but soon after Fujisawa arrived, Ken Kutaragi started up Sony Computer Entertainment 
to work on the PlayStation. Fujisawa was asked to be the team manager responsible for sound. Part of his role was to develop the startup sound for the new console. Fujisawa wanted the sound to express the power potential of the new console. It took him less than a month to make start to finish. He took influence from orchestral timbres like brass and strings, bringing them into a synthetic world. Something really interesting he does with the PS1 startup sound is that he begins in an equal temperament tuning system, and then over time it morphs into pure intonation harmony. What this means is the notes slowly detune into intervals that we are less comfortable with. Take a listen. This process subtly destabilizes the listener, and Fujisawa hoped that it would lead to a strong impression. Fujisawa confirmed to me that he didn't use a Roland JV800 or a D50 to make the startup sound. Instead, he used a Roland S550, which is a sample-based rack unit. He sampled real-world instruments and real sounds, which he manipulated and turned into loop material. He took three of these loops and used the PlayStation's built-in 16-bit sound processing unit to live MIDI sequence those samples. What this means is that the startup sound you hear isn't a pre-rendered file that's played back to you. What it actually is, is three separate files that are performed live by your PlayStation. This allowed Fujisawa to make better use of the extremely limited read-only memory available to him on the PlayStation. Due to the PS1's ridiculous success, the PlayStation 2 sound team was much larger than just one man. Ken Kudaragi wanted the PS2 startup sound to be like a monolith floating in space above Earth. To achieve this, Fujisawa's sound team worked with various studio equipment from the time and competed in teams to see who could create the best startup sound. Once they reached a final idea, Fujisawa polished it himself, emphasizing perfect fourth chords like he had done with the PS1. Takafumi Fujisawa would continue working with Sony after the launch of the PS2. While he also worked on the PSP and PS3, he told me that his main mission at the time was to head up the Sony Sound Division, and produce sound for all titles coming out of Sony Entertainment. It was here where he worked with Tetsuya Komuro on a game called Gobol Scream. But he worked with other artists too, like Fumiya Fuji on Baby Universe and Masaya Matsura on Parappa the Rapper. <laughs> Other iconic projects he worked on include Fluid, the Forbidden Siren series, and Ape Escape. After moving on from Sony, Takafumi Fujisawa continued to work in the sound and games industry. In 2020, he organized Evo Japan, and most recently, he was producer and sound director for Tekken Bloodline, which you can watch right now on Netflix. Okay, so that's the end of the video. After doing all this research and learning all this stuff, I ended up using the techniques and synths that I heard about in creating the sound that's been playing under the whole video. So maybe that sounded a little bit like something PS2 inspired. And I'll let it play us out in a second. But I just wanted to say a big thank you to Takafumi Fujisawa for making this video possible. And a big thank you to you for watching.